Well, friends of uh, Christ, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, welcome you to this uh, nightly presentation. And uh, I'm glad that uh, the Lord uh, has seen it fit, that uh, we may sit at his feet again and be able to share in his word, which is true, which is everlasting. And so I'd like us to pray, and then uh, I have something uh, brief to share with us. That is uh, the impartation of peace. Shall we have uh, a word of prayer? Dear Lord in heaven, again, we come before thy throne of grace, just saying thank you for being with us. Thank you even for the literal rains around the world. And Lord, we pray that uh, we may share in the spiritual rain upon our hearts, that our souls may be comforted, refreshed, and Lord, our sins may be forgiven, that we may grow in newness of life. And so as we look at uh, the impartation of peace, this is what we need at such a time as this, as the world is filled with chaos. And Lord, help us to get it, not in deception, but in truth, by overcoming sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so uh, I'd like to share something on uh, the impartation of peace. It is uh, what we need, and more so in this uh, nation, the country of Kenya, when there is uh, a lot of demonstrations, a lot of uh, hunger, and uh, the economic crisis that we are facing and people demonstrating on the roads. What we need is peace, but uh, how can we find this peace? That is the biggest question. And uh, allow me to share a few sentiments with us and um, also the people who are in this country so that we may know where shall we get peace? Is it getting a new president? Is it getting a new government? Is it getting new cabinet, cabinet ministers? That is not what I think is going to bring peace. In the book of John chapter 14, verses 27, um, Christ says that uh, my peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. And you can see I have done something on it, the spirit. I leave you with my spirit. I give unto you, not as the world giveth unto you, let not your heart uh, uh, be without the comforter, neither let it be afraid. Uh, and so Christ is uh, assuring us of uh, imparting his own peace upon our lives. And uh, if you look at the narrative of John chapter 14, it is in the context of giving us the comforter, which uh, nothing else can match it. We are told that uh, in that one gift, heaven itself was emptied of everything unto humanity. And so our work is to get this peace that cometh from Christ, that comforter, because uh, it is the presence of peace in our life that um, we feel the comfort in life. But uh, without peace, we don't have the comfort. And so as Christ is telling his disciples, peace I give unto you, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll not leave you as orphans. He offers his peace that cannot be purchased at any uh, price. You, you can purchase it with the, the stones on the streets. You can not purchase it with the um, salary increment. You can not purchase this peace with uh, good mortgage housing and all that stuff. This is only something that you can get if you have your heart given to Jesus Christ. In, uh, one author tells us in the Ministry of Healing, abiding peace through rest of spirit has but one source. It was of this that Christ spoke when he said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and uh, I'll give you rest in Matthew chapter 11, 28. He wants us to give us the physical, the mental, and the spiritual rest. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. This is the true rest of peace of, of the spirit. Not as the world giveth, Give I unto you, John 14, 27. This peace is not something that he gives apart from himself. 
it is in Christ and we can receive it only by receiving him. And so the, the peace, the kind of peace that this world is looking for, brothers and sisters, it's not a peace that is going to last. If you look at the chaos in various countries, nation rising against nation, kingdom rising against kingdom, family rising against family, and all this stuff you put together, and what is it for? People are looking for peace. People are looking for fulfillment in their marriages. They are looking for fulfillment in their, in their countries. People are looking for solutions. And it narrows down to, is your heart at peace? That is something that we have to ask ourselves. Even if you are given everything that you are needing today, will your heart find peace or it will be a short-lived peace where actually if these things were taken out of your life, then you will be at point zero or even will be at negative zero. And so we are talking about the impartation of peace and it is not something that you can get it out of Christ. You, you look at the nation of uh, Israel, which longed for this peace of time, being in a chaotic situation under the tyranny of different uh, oppressors. The nation of Israel itself uh, was uh, for almost 500 years without the comfort or without peace. It was under the Roman slavery. It was under the Roman yoke. And you look at the Christian priest and how they used to rule over the people. And the nation of Israel hoped for somebody who will uh, take them out of this slavery of the Roman yoke. And so when Jesus came on the scene and you hear the children singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord, they knew that uh, the king of Salem had came. That is the king of Jerusalem, the king of peace. They expected Christ to take away the yoke of the Romans and uh, be able to restore sanity in the nation of Israel. But then something so uh, surprising happened to these people who are waiting for peace. These people are waiting for Shiloh. Those people are waiting for the king of Salem. Once, after Jesus Christ feeding them with the, uh, just a few fishes and a few loaves, they wanted to make him a king by force. Now, the people who are experiencing peace do not do things in force because force is the last resort of every false religion, where, whether it be in marriage life, whether it be in uh, your workplace, whether it be whichever atmosphere that you may be in, force is the last resort of every false religion. Now, they wanted to make the king of peace a king by force because they had eaten some few loaves of bread and they wanted to do away with the Roman yoke. But this could not happen. Christ refused such a homage that he could get out of chaos. And so the news spread swiftly that uh, by his own confession, Jesus of Nazareth was... Um, not the Messiah, and thus in Galilee, the current of popular feeling was turned against him. Why? Because he had refused to be made the king by force. What are they looking for? Peace. But how are they going to get their king? By force. It cannot be like that. The peace that we experience in heart cannot come out of chaos and out of war. And so when they wanted to make Jesus Christ uh, a king by force, he refused meaning that uh, the impartation of peace on our hearts do not have to come out of violence or out of chaos. And so when Jesus Christ refused to be the king out of the chaos, they rejected the Savior because they longed for a conqueror who will give them temporal power. This peace that people get out of violence, it is temporal peace. It is temporal power. And it cannot last. And Jesus Christ refused such a peace to be given to Israel. And uh, when we look at what is happening around the world, and you can give an example of what is happening in South Africa, you can give an example of what is happening in Ukraine, in Russia, in the Middle East. You can look at our own country, Kenya, what is happening there. People want peace, 
but they are, they are on the streets and tomorrow they'll be there on the streets. And what are they seeking? Peace. Because the things that they are requiring, the lowering of the prices of the things and so on, it is to make life easier and give them a peace of mind. That is what you hear people say that uh, we want these things to be reduced, their prices, because we want a peace of mind. I, I, we just want to live a normal life. But uh, how are they going to get this peace out of violence? And if you get the peace out of violence, then it will be short-lived. And so uh, many times as we pursue our own peace in the ways that has not been prescribed by our Lord Jesus Christ, what we are actually doing, we are pushing away the king of peace. Tell me now, as we are shedding blood, uh, uh, as we are causing bloodshed in this country, and uh, a few people dies, and then uh, maybe things becomes normal. At the end of the day, what has brought about peace? The death of somebody. And the commandments say, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not hate your brother. And so this is a carnal peace. And then we are told in the book of Thessalonians, at the time they say peace, peace, sudden destruction comes unto them because this peace that they have found in their hearts, it is temporal, it's not long lasting, and they have not found it in the right way. And so uh, Jesus Christ offers something better than uh, revolutions, more than strikes, and more than demonstration. And uh, one time when he was preaching his doctrine in uh, John chapter 6 about people feeding on his flesh and drinking of his blood, which is true bread and which is true drink, which brings about the comfort that they need in their heart. Many people were offended by this issue of uh, relying on Christ for their daily living. That is essentially what it was there because many walked away from him. Many of his disciples walked away and they did not continue with him. What essentially were they saying? We do not want a life where we are dependent on you. Because he was telling them, you must eat my flesh. You must eat, drink of my blood. And this is the true bread that came from heaven. Now, we find that uh, Peter had a different opinion from the other people who are walking away from Christ. Peter had a different opinion. When uh, these people were doing all this, Christ asked his 12 disciples, will you also go away? Peter replied by asking, Peter replied by asking, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. He added, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of living God. It is only in him that uh, they could get whatever their souls were thirsting for. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And uh, the peace that uh, we are talking about is the surety that even if our lives go wrong today and uh, we are, are removed by death, which is asleep, still we have that blessed hope and uh, our hearts are resting in peace that at the last trump, we shall be resurrected and be with our king, the king of peace forevermore. And so the, quest, the question of Peter, to whom shall we go? The teachers of Israel were slaves to formalism. The Pharisees and Sadducees were in constant contention. There is no peace. Where there is contention, there is no peace. To leave Jesus was to fall among sticklers for rites and ceremonies and ambitious men who sought their own glory. And so we find that, uh, let me pause there for a moment. We find that uh, if you seek peace out of violence, you are just uh, um, bringing yourself in a group which is uh, uh, not being guided by Jesus Christ, but uh, uh, a group which is seeking their own vain glory. And so if you, if you find a, somebody telling you, you know, for us to get this peace that we want, we have to do this, which will affect somebody negatively. 
adversely in their life negatively. It will result even in somebody's death. It will result into somebody's exile. If somebody directs you to get peace through such means, then what um, we are, are really doing is um, seeking our own glory. And the peace that seeks its own glory, it's only the peace that is of this earth and not the peace that cometh from heaven. We continue reading about these people who are seeking peace, what they were doing. The disciples had found more peace and joy since they had accepted Christ, not like these people were in formalism and seeking peace by violence. And we are told, um, how could they go back to those who had scorned and persecuted the friend of sinners? They had long been looking for the Messiah. Now he had come and they could not turn from his presence to those who were hunting his life and had persecuted them for becoming his followers. Remember, we are told that um, abiding peace, true rest of the spirit has but one source. It was of this that Christ spoke when he said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. This peace is not something that he gives apart from himself. It is in Christ and we can receive it only by receiving him. It's, if only this is the message that can be preached in this country, that uh, the peace we are looking for right now in economy, in recession, in inflation, and in governance can only be found in Christ then we will think a little bit more before we go to the roads to riot. And so uh, we are seeing that uh, Christ has many things to offer unto those uh, who are seeking him. And uh, what he is seeking to impart to the heart is the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5.22. Maybe we can read just that to find what true peace really uh, entails. In uh, Galatians 5.22, in Galatians 5.22, uh, this is um, what um, our Bible tells us. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such a, there is no law. And so you find that uh, the fruit of the spirit is peace. And so if we find ourselves without peace, then it means that we don't have the Holy Spirit of God. Whether we are of the world, whether we are of the church, if we find ourselves that we are joining in, in uh, trying to pursue violence, to pursue peace by violence, then we are not of the spirit of Christ. And uh, the reason, the very reason why the churches are weak, the very reason why the churches are weak uh, we are told that uh, the reason why the churches are weak and sickly and ready to die is that the enemy has wrought influences of discouraging nature to bear upon trembling souls. He has sought to shut Jesus from their view as the comforter, as one who reproves, who wants, who admonishes them, saying this is the way walking in it. Christ has all power in heaven and earth, and he can strengthen the wavering and set right the erring. He can inspire with confidence, with hope in God, and in, con in confidence in God always resulting in getting confident in one another. And so if we are in Christ, then we can inspire confidence in one another. Why is this nation missing confidence in the people who are even in the leadership? And uh, I'm not asking us to follow the political side of the question blindly we are christians and we have to hold ourselves aloof from this politics uh, so bad that you can also find that christians are going to the road to really demonstrate on the things that are happening as if they have uh, uh, um, they have uh, rescinded their uh, citizenship from heaven to earth you know the things of this earth should pass us as a fly passes 
but uh, we find ourselves so um, um, amazed in them and uh, we are so involved in them until we really forget that our citizenship in heaven is in heaven. And so the reason why we don't have confidence in each other is because there is lacking the spirit of peace in our hearts where we shall develop trust, where we shall develop uh, esteeming each other more than ourselves. All such things are missing because the spirit of Christ is missing in our hearts. Uh, and uh, we try to forget the promises of Jesus Christ in the book of John uh, chapter 14 and Matthew chapter 28. Jesus himself saying, uh, I'll come back to you. I'm with you till the end. And so if uh, we would experience that uh, which is everlasting, it is uh, to ask the spirit of Christ to come and fill our hearts. To come in our hearts and fill our hearts. Now, in the book of James chapter 4, in the book of James chapter 4, let us look at this as we look at the impartation of peace. What the nations are missing is peace. And essentially what they are missing is the spirit of God. If we will have the spirit of God, then we will not be as uh, we are right now. In James chapter 4, from when come wars and fighting among you, can they not hand even of your last that war in your members. Now, the opposite of peace is war. Try to get that. Why are we fighting? Why are we in war? Because there is no peace. If there were peace in our heart, there is no war, even among the brethren in churches and those who are not of the church. And so the reason why there is no peace in our hearts, it is because there is the presence of war. And why is there the presence of the war? Because of lust. And the flesh lasted after the spirit, and the spirit lasted after the flesh, and these two are at war. And so what actually is happening in our lives is that um, the spirit is fighting with the flesh. And many have... Uh, have uh, have yielded to the flesh in that the spirit have not had it is place to give peace the true rest of the spirit is peace if only they will allow the holy spirit to get ascendancy over um over the flesh then they'll have the true rest of peace and then they will live at peace with each other Verse 2 of James chapter 4 says, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because, because you ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. And so this, these are the things that are happening in our mind, that um, the wars okay. that we are having, both spiritual battles and the physical battles that we are seeing happen around the four corners of the world, it is because the true rest of the spirit is not in the heart, which is peace. Once we have this, and we cannot have this without having Christ. No, no atheist is going to have peace, by the way. No pagan, no heathen is going to have peace because the true rest of the spirit is peace. And we cannot come into possession of this true rest, which is peace, without having Christ, because we only have it in Christ. It is only the one who have it, and we can only obtain him by having him in our heart. And so uh, I want us to read this because uh, it is uh, really interesting. In uh, early writing page uh, 54, 55 and 56, we are told, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you.
For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a, if a son shall ask bread or any of you that is a father, will he give him? I repeat, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or he, if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good goods unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And so you will find that uh, um, we are told that uh, what we are asking, we are asking a miss. And that is in the book of Ma that is uh, taken from the book of Matthew chapter 7, that uh, we who are able know how to go give good gifts to our children. But then, how much more about our Father who is in heaven? When we ask for bread, he will not only give us the bread that we need, but he will give us his spirit. And why should our Heavenly Father, when we ask the bread, not only give us the bread, but give us the spirit, so that we may know even how to use that bread? Because you may be given the bread that you are asking for and not use it the right way. Either you use it gluttoniously or uh, you use it selfishly and all that stuff. And so on top of giving you the daily needs, he will add his spirit on it. Because the spirit, what it brings is the true rest, which is peace. And so you will eat whatever he has given unto you and you shall be fulfilled in it, you shall have peace in it. More than going to steal, more than demonstrating, more than fighting. And by the way, at the end of the day, you may get what you are fighting for, what you are demonstrating for, but will your conscience have peace that I got this bread out of the death of someone else? I got this thing that I needed, because somebody's mother died somewhere else. And I'm the cause. Will your conscience really admit peace in your heart? Never. And uh, it, it will never be so. And so abiding peace, true rest of the spirit comes uh, from one source. And we cannot have it unless we have Christ in uh, our, hearts, our hearts. And so in... Uh, in our, uh, in our, um, in our effort to get what we need in this life, how are we going about it to get it? And uh, it is only the grace of Christ in our heart that really can fulfill our desires, N not the things that people are pursuing right now. It is only the grace of Jesus Christ in our hearts that can reproduce and produce what um, it is needful for us in such a time as this. Um, look at the book of, uh, I just wanted to share this because uh, I know that people are going through a lot and uh, it is not as your leaders have told you, it's not as your church has demonstrated to you that uh, you must have this and that, and you must have this and that, so that uh, you may have the peace that you need. In Isaiah chapter 26, in Isaiah chapter 26, uh, I want to look at a few verses, then we close. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 26, verses um, 3 and 4, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So do you need peace? Do you need the rest of the mind? Then stay connected to Jesus Christ, he says so, and trust in him. And then you will have that perfect peace that uh, you are looking for. And uh, we should not be like the wicked. We, we are told that the wicked do not have rest. They do not have peace in their heart. They are like post seas in the book of Isaiah. 
and they'll never have peace. If, if we find that uh, our hearts are missing peace and rest that we should be having, then let us start thinking of the lines in the lines that uh, we are part of the weekend. That is the reality of the matter. We, we should be having this peace in our hearts because Christ has died for us and uh, he has forgiven us our sins. And uh, this is a gift unto us that no one else can take it away from us. No hunger, no death, no sickness can take away that which Christ brings in the heart. But uh, people are looking into the solution in the wrong way. And uh, I recommend to you Jesus Christ who will give you peace of the heart. In the book of Psalms 121, I wanted just to encourage us this night before we sleep in this country and wake up to more demonstrations. I pray that uh, the Lord will remind people that uh, this peace cannot be gotten by the swords on the street and the firearms and the tear gas and all this stuff. If you are a Christian, please stay away from such a things because they will not only bring you uh, eternal damnation. In Psalms, the division 121, the psalmist have a song of degrees. And listen to this song. He says, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from when cometh my help. Help in every aspect of life's problems and every solution that is needed for such a time as this. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Verse 5, the Lord is the keeper. The Lord is the shed upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. He is the one who has promised that he shall do those things. And so as we go about our daily lives, let us think about it. What are we pursuing? Are we pursuing the rest uh, of the spirit and uh, the peace that Christ has promised he will bring upon this earth by our own ways and our own devising? Or are we seeking it as Christ has told us that we should seek it? And so I just want to pray that uh, as uh, we see this earth history coming to an end, and uh, all the prophecies that were written being fulfilled. Ask yourself this night, do I have peace? And if you are missing peace, then it means that you are missing the spirit of God. And how shall it be? If you are missing the spirit of God, listen to what Romans chapter 8 verses 9 says. Romans chapter 8 verses, uh, verses 11 Romans chapter 8, verses 11, it says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also kick in your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And then, verse 10, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And then we go to verse 9. I'm reading it from down up. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And so, if uh, you are letting the flesh really regulate how you behave, and what is happening around this country, people do not have bread. People do not have this and that. Things that are so physical. They think that uh, maybe the lowering of these things will make their life even better. No, you can have even things being brought to you at zero shillings, but uh, your life will never be better because the life can only get better if you are in Christ. And so 
we must come into possession with this spirit if we will have the peace that we need. And if we do not have this spirit, then we are none of Christ. And if we are none of Christ, then we can be sure that when he cometh the second time, we shall be none of him. We shall be lost like the wicked. And so let Christians think, think about this. You hear the pastor saying this and the pastor saying that they are divided between two opinions, what they should be telling the people of this country and even in the other nations where there are demonstrations and there are wars, there are uh, bloodshed going on. The, the clergy are divided. But uh, you can be comforted in this. You can revisit yourself and re-examine yourself and see what is Christ recommending at such a time? And as a clergy and as a pastor, as a layman who believes in Jesus Christ, what should you be recommending to the people as you see the art history being fulfilled? Otherwise, may the gracious Lord bless us and uh, give us this peace that uh, the president cannot give us, the opposition leader cannot give us, and also even the church members, the pastors, the clergy, uh, the laity cannot give you. Let only your peace come from Jesus Christ. And this peace comes when you are in possession of the Holy Spirit, which cannot be bought at any price. Christ gives it freely. He says that uh, 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 for them that thirst is come and drink freely. Come and take drink uh, 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 freely from Jesus Christ, who is the rock of ages, from the founded, the true founded. You will, your thirst will be quenched and uh, the desires of your place shall be, the desires of your heart shall be fulfilled. And so let us pursue the true peace from the King of Salem and not from the things of this world which are passing away. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us and uh, may we pray as uh, we prepare to face the day of tomorrow if Christ allows us to see it. Heavenly Father, once again, thank you that, Lord, the peace we need in this country and in other countries can only be gotten when uh, we have the, your spirit in us. And we cannot come into possession of your spirit without uh, believing in your name and uh, holding on to the merits of your blood. And so, Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to give us the comfort when we do not have comfort from our surrounding and from the chaos of neighbors and uh, all the people who don't understand the comfort is there with us to comfort us from all these troubles. And so once again, I pray that uh, you may bring peace in this country, not peace that uh, is temporary, but the peace that is everlasting. They will continue to be done and uh, minister to us and protect us during this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.